Uh, dear students and new years, uh, today let us see the basics of chemistry. It branches like uh, physical chemistry, organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry. Uh, let us also try to explore more about atomic number, mass number and an insight for valency. So chemistry is broadly classified into physical chemistry, second one is organic chemistry, third one is inorganic chemistry. And the physical chemistry deals with uh, how the uh, elements have been arranged and how the uh, subatomic particles like uh, protons, neutrons and the electrons have been arranged. Uh, uh, then uh, what about the lattice structures like uh, ACC, BCC, FCC. So these details, how an element is composed of, what are its physical characters. So all these things we will see in the physical chemistry. Let us deal with the physical chemistry in depth when you are going to discuss about valency, Aubba principle, Hun's rule uh, and poly exclusion principle. There are a lot of chemistry involved. So at that time we can see more about the physical chemistry. Uh, and coming to organic chemistry, the main carbon, the main compound being the organic chemistry is carbon. Otherwise I can tell in layman terms like this, the hero of organic chemistry is carbon. Without carbon there is no chemistry called as organic chemistry. Sometimes they will call the organic chemistry also as a carbon chemistry. So now what is the relation between carbon and organism? So you, term, you know in a biology, organism. Organism means anything which has a lives. Okay. So it can be animals or plants or anything. So which have some lives is called as organism. So if you find any living organism, definitely there will be carbon content in it. So they told that instead of telling us organic chemistry, instead of telling us carbon chemistry, they have revealed as organic chemistry because all living organism will contain carbon in it. That is alone not the reason for the organic chemistry. The one more reason is that the tendency of the carbon to combine with itself. That is a peculiar character of carbon which distinguishes between other elements. Uh, so I want to tell there are nearly 118 elements are there in the modern periodic table. When we are studying uh, some 20 years back, there are hardly 108 elements. But as of today, as of today, there is a 2023, there are nearly 118 elements. Out of this 180 elements, only the carbon has a peculiar property to combine with itself. To combine with itself. So how is going to combine? one carbon with another carbon, one more carbon, one more carbon, one more carbon. Like this, it can form a lengthy chain of even 25, 50 like that. So it can form a straight chain carbon compounds. Whereas I can't write like this for oxygen. This is okay. O2 molecule is possible. Even this is okay. This is what ozone. This is possible. But I can't write like this. It is wrong. It is not available. Or I can't write like this. Got it? So any other element other than carbon do not have the tendency to combine by itself to form a number of compounds. So since the carbon has a tendency, not only in the form of straight chain, even it can be like this, branched also it can be. That is what I am saying. So like this, not only this carbon will combine with carbon alone, it can combine with the alcohol group. OH group is alcoholic group. It can also combine with the acid. It can also combine with the aldehydes. So like this ketones, ethers. So don't worry about structure. What I am about to tell here is that the carbon has a, have a peculiar tendency that it can combine with itself to form a separate part of chemistry called as organic chemistry. And if you are going to deal with other compounds, namely hydrogen, helium, other than carbon. So you can see out of 118 elements, if I'm going to leave carbon, if I'm going to consider other elements, then the type of chemistry is called as what? Inorganic chemistry. So for both organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry, the physical chemistry is common. The physical chemistry is common to for both organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry. 
So uh, there are one, 118 elements are there in which at least you students should know the first 20 elements. You students should know first 20 elements. The first element is he hydrogen, second is helium, the third is uh, lithium, fourth is beryllium, fifth is boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon. So these elements have been uh, written in the increasing atomic number. So this is called as what? Atomic number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the 11th will be the sodium, magnesium. So if you want, I can write here. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, then potassium and calcium. So I have written the elements in the increasing atomic number from element number 1 to 20. Still there are many elements. As I told, there are 118 elements. Uh, so I want my students also to know about the uh, compounds or the elements up to at least 20 elements. Their first 20 elements. Yearly the periodic table, the elements have been in a table called as periodic table. Yearly this table was based on the atomic mass. But uh, the latest mentalist modern period table, what they did means they have arranged the elements according to the increasing atomic number. So now you may be wondering what this person is talking about atomic number. I do not know what is atomic number. But if we have arranged it as per the atomic number. So we will try to find out what is atomic number. We will explore more about atomic number and mass number. Okay. So generally the mass number will be twice of the atomic number. Generally the mass number will be what? Twice the atomic number. So it will be 1, it will be 4, it will be 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, okay, oh, sorry, 14, 12 means 14, oh, yeah, it is 16, I will write it here. It, I am telling approximately, I am not telling accurately, it is approximately, and Nyan is 20, and Nyan is 20, so sodium is 22, is, is a, atomic number is Z, is mass number is 22, magnesium is 24, aluminum is 36, oh, sorry, 26, then silicon is 28, phosphorus is 30, sulfur is 32, chlorine is 34, argon is 36, this is 38, this is 40. This is what generally I used to tell my students. If you are unable to recall the mass number of the elements, you can approximately take the thumb rule to be what? Two is of the atomic number. But generally it's not so. Okay, so if you are going to take lithium, its atomic number is not 6, it's slightly more than 6, it's 7. For beryllium, it is not actually 8, it is 9. So there are some exceptions. There are some exceptions. But I am telling roughly an idea how we can recall is that it is twice of the atomic number. Similarly, boron is not 10, it is 11. It is 11. Slightly higher than uh, this, uh, twice. Okay, but carbon the atomic number is 2 only. For nitrogen, it is uh, 14. For oxygen, it is 16. For fluorine, it is 18. This is not fine. For uh, even fluorine, it will be 19. Fluorine will be around... 19. Okay, sodium is, uh, is not even 22, it is 23. So don't uh, don't become uh, tired or uh, disturbed with the numbers. These are just numbers. You can buy heart and you can recall. But the general thumb rule is what? It is twice. Even I have made some, uh, I have to make some changes. For even uh, phosphorus, the atomic weight is, or the mass number is 31. Is it? 31. For chlorine, it is not 34. It is 35.5. Which means there can be some fraction also. For organ, it is not 36, it is nearly 40. It is 40. This so potassium is 39, whereas calcium is 40. So don't worry about the numbers. So generally what I about to mean is that the mass numbers will be almost twice of the atomic number. But there will be some slight variation, which you can get it from your uh, log table. Okay, prayer table, you can get the values. So now let us discuss about the elements their atomic number and the mass number. What is going to be atomic number and the mass numbers? So we do not know what is going to be atomic number. We are unaware of mass number. They are very basic numbers. Mass number. The atomic number is given by the term 
capital Z. The mass number is given by the term A. Generally designated as A. Now let us take hydrogen. Hydrogen is atomic number is 1. Is atomic number. Or I will take an example of uh, say, um, say I will take carbon because uh, it is a very good combo, very good element. So it is atomic number 6. So what do you mean by atomic number? So first of all we should know what is an atom is made up of. Atom is made up of subatomic particles namely proton which carries a positive charge. Then the electron which carries a negative charge. And the third one is the neutron which is neutral and doesn't have any charge. It is chargeless. It is chargeless. So if you are going to consider carbon as an element and this atom, the element is made up of number of atoms. So if we are going to consider an single carbon atom, it will have some subatomic particles. What are they? Proton, electron and the neutron. The proton gives a positive charge, the electron gives a negative charge and the neutron is chargeless or neutral in nature or neutral in nature. What does this atomic number is 6? If you are going to take in any atom, whether it is carbon, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, any atom, it has two compounds. It has two compounds or two components. The first component is the nucleus. The first component is called what? Nucleus. In the nucleus, what will be there means? There will be neutrons and protons. There will be neutrons and protons. But it is a general convention to use small n rather than capital N. For neutron, it is a general convention to use. Either if you are using capital N, it is also not a mistake. But general convention is small n and p. This neutron and proton will be always will be found only within the nucleus, will be found only inside the nucleus, whereas electrons will be roaming around the nucleus. The electrons will be revolving or roaming around the nucleus in a particular fashion, in a particular orbit, and hence these are called as orbits. Orbits can be further subdivided into orbitals. I will tell these orbits can be first further subdivided into what? Orbitals. Or suborbits is called as orbitals. Suborbit is called as what? Orbital. So we can see the electrons will be revolving around the orbits. So the orbit need not be one. It can be one, two, three. Just like our solar system. The sun is there and the planets are revolving around the orbits. Similarly, inside the sun, we have the, here the sun is called as the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, we have neutrons and protons. In the orbits, the electrons are revolving. The orbit is called as electrons are revolving. Generally, this electron is called as electron cloud. Why it is called as electron cloud? Why the electrons are not called as electron? And why they are called as electron clouds? Any idea? No, no. How many number of protons is there? The same number of electrons will be there. So we can't tell the number of electrons is more uh, than the number of protons. So how many? For example, if you have 10 protons, there will be 10 electrons. 20 protons, 20 electrons. But who you are calling electron clouds? What do you mean by the meaning called clouds? Who they are calling as electron as clouds? The reason is that they are very, very light. It's a gaseous phase. They will be just revolving. So they will not contribute to the mass. They will not contribute to the mass. They are very, very lighter. They are very, very lighter. But they have charge. But they have what? Charge. So you have to think this electron as a cloud. Electron as a cloud and it will be keep on moving around an orbit and hence they are very very lighter they are very very lighter so this is nothing but what electrons so if you are going to consider an atom like an element like carbon what is the charge of the carbon whether it is positive or negative or neutral both means huh? both positive and negative. no we can't tell both positive and negative it is neutral any element in its normal state is neutral which means it doesn't have any charge it doesn't, it doesn't possess any charge. But we know that all the elements will have protons and electron. Then how it becomes uh, neutral? I told you, yeah, all elements, whether hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, up to all the only elements, they are called as neutral elements. So number of protons is equal to number yeah. So we also know that all the elements will have protons and electrons. At the same time, they should be neutral. They should not have any charge, which means how many number of positive charges there, the same number of negative charge means also, then they become cancel each other. Let us say for a 
carbon the six protons there will be how many electrons how many electrons will be there six electrons so what is the net charge six positive six negative so it becomes zero zero is neutral zero is what neutral so they don't have any charge if i'm going to take neon is atomic number is 10 how many protons will be there in case of neon is atomic number is 10 so 10 protons will be there which means 10 positive charge 10 electrons will be there isn't it so 10 electrons so 10 negative charge so what is the charge total charge zero so from this now you define me what is atomic number yeah so atomic number is nothing but the number of electrons atomic number is the number of electrons as soon as you know that how many number of elements of electrons is there the same number of photons should also be there so i can define the atomic number as the number of electrons or the number of protons because both will be same here it is minus 10 it is plus 10 but the number is same 10 means here also what 10 so if i'm going to come to the definition of atomic number so what are the definition can you tell me what are the definition of atomic number yeah very good atomic number of any element atomic number is that of any element is defined as number of electrons simply i can tell you like this number of electrons but you also know that the atom is stable the atom is neutral which means the number of electrons should be equal to what number of protons so the atomic number can be defined as either the number of electrons or number of protons but not both but you should not add them either it's a number of electrons or number of protons so now i'm telling origin is atomic number is eight what do you understand from this one origin this element has an atomic number of eight how many what what do you understand from this atomic number eight number of electrons and number of so the number of electrons in origin atom is eight the number of protons in origin atom is also eight what is the number of neutrons in origin we don't know we don't know because the atomic number doesn't display about the number of neutrons the atomic number either says the number of electrons or the number of protons but it doesn't throw any light on the number of neutrons doesn't throw any number on the neutrons so very good so now we got what is the meaning of atomic number okay now let us tell generally okay i'll tell you like this c and here i'll put a here i'll put z what is c carbon atom or carbon element what is a mass number a is nothing but what mass number what is it atomic number so it's a general convention to indicate the atomic number at the bottom low subscript and we have to indicate the mass number at the top superscript okay so the i'll tell you the carbon is mass number is 12 and its atomic number is what six so how do i know you you also come to know in future don't worry so the mass number of carbon atom is 12 the atomic number of carbon is what six now you know the atomic number now you know the atomic number what is it mean by atomic number number of electrons or number of protons. protons okay very good so what is the number of electrons here in carbon six very good the number of electrons is six what is the number of protons in carbon atom six because we know that both will be same now as i told you earlier where will be the neutron will be there the nucleus. where the proton will be there the nucleus so very good so you can see it is neutron and proton okay or i can simply put as what n plus p n plus p now why i told electron cloud can you recall why we have told as electron cloud yeah it it doesn't contribute to the mass it doesn't contribute to the mass so where the mass will come from yeah the electrons cannot contribute to the mass so the mass will be coming from the nucleus so what is now mass number number of protons plus number of that's it so whatever is contributed by the nucleus is called as what mass number so the mass number is defined as mass number is defined as number of neutrons plus number of protons so the mass number is defined as what number of neutrons plus protons we know that what the mass number of carbon is 12 we know the mass number of carbon is what 12 how do we know that we'll come to that later but right now we know the mass number is given in the problem so the mass number is 12 we also know this proton number is what six so what are the number of neutrons 
So the protons will also be six. Proton will also be six. So the mass is contributed by the nucleus, and the nucleus we have the elements called as neutrons and protons. So the mass number is nothing but the summation of neutrons and the protons. So we can see the from this we got the number of neutrons in carbon is also what six. So I can tell in carbon atom we have six electron, six proton, and six neutrons. Six neutrons. So any doubt in the mass number? Uh, clear. Now why they are considering the uh, mass of the electron is light means if this mass of for example I'm telling if I'm going to consider the mass of electron as one gram, it will not be one gram. It will be still very less. For you to understand to realize I'm telling the mass of electron is one gram. Then the mass of one proton is one one eight seven grams. One one eight seven is more than one kilogram. So compared to one kilogram, one gram is negligible. Similarly, the mass of the neutron is also almost same as that of the number of mass of the proton. Okay, the mass of the neutron is also what? Almost same as that of the mass of the proton. So the total bulk mass is there in the nucleus only. So we are avoiding or neglecting the mass of the electrons. Even though they carry some mass, but compared to the mass in the nucleus, they are negligible. And hence the mass number is equal to what? Number of neutrons plus number of protons. Okay, fine. Now let me take another example. In case of hydrogen, one H one. What is this one? Atomic number. What is this one? Mass. Mass number. Okay. So the first orbit, there is only one electron. There is only one electron. One electron means how many protons? One proton. What is mass number? Of hydrogen. Number of protons plus number. Of okay, number of number of neutrons neutron. plus number of protons equal to what? One. one. So mass number equal to number of neutrons plus number of protons is equal to one. Now, what is the number of neutrons in case of hydrogen? Equal to what? One minus number of protons. What is number of protons? One, one only. Already we know. So the number of neutrons in hydrogen is what? Zero. So the only one element which exists in the world with this no neutron is hydrogen only. All of the elements will have definitely at least one neutron. But they may ask you in a question, in a core company or in a, I mean, you're going for IIT, J and all, they may ask some questions where they will ask, name an element without neutrons. Then you have to immediately tell you, so what? Hydrogen. So we can say one neutron, uh, so sorry, zero neutrons <coughs> plus one. So totally it will be what? It will be equal to? One. So the mass number is also what? One. The atomic number is also what? One. So this is also a beauty case where the atomic number is also equal to the mass number. The atomic number is equal to the mass number because the neutron is not there. Okay, fine. Uh, so I will draw. So that only I came to hydrogen a little later. We can explore the chemistry a little further. <coughs> so I will write like this. Neutron, zero. Proton, one. Electron is what? Electron is also one. Now, in, this is nothing but hydrogen atom. This is nothing but what? Hydrogen atom. Now, by giving some external force or some external agency, I am going to remove this electron from this hydrogen atom. I am going to remove this electron from the hydrogen. How I am doing that is I am doing separately. I am doing some by means. I am going to remove the electron from this hydrogen atom. Already this hydrogen doesn't have neutron. Now this hydrogen doesn't have electron also. Now you have to have only what? Proton. Now, what is the charge of this hydrogen atom? Here, this charge is what? Neutral. Why it is neutral? Because proton is one, electron is one, which means positive one, negative one, so it becomes zero. Now, I have already removed one electron. So, what is the charge will be now? One positive. So, H plus is nothing but the symbol for proton. H plus is the symbol for what? Why I put one plus? Because there is only one positive charge. There is no electrons. So it's not neutral, it is having one positive charge. So this is the symbol for proton. This is the symbol for what? Proton. Why I am not telling neutron? Because the neutron is already not there. Neutron is zero means what? There is no neutron. There is no electron. There is only one proton. This proton came from where? Hydrogen atom. When the hydrogen atom doesn't have electron, it becomes proton. When the hydrogen atom doesn't have electron, it becomes what? Proton. But it will have a charge. It is not neutral. It will have a one positive charge. So H plus is a symbol for the proton. 
now let us explore how to find the valency what is meant by now we came to an idea what is meant by atomic number and mass number we have uh, analyzed a lot i hope it's sufficient now let us go for valency what is meant by valency any idea number of electrons ah number of electrons either to add or remove to reach a stable state either to add or remove to reach a stable state okay i want to put in a very layman terms what is meant by valency The number of electrons I can give, or I can uh, accept. The uh, number of electrons giving or taking also somewhat higher end. I want still to come to a lower end. What you told is right. There is nothing wrong. What you told is right. So what is number valency? Uh, either removing electrons or adding electrons uh, so that the atom will attain a stable state. Okay, but I do not know what is stable. I do not know why I have to remove the electron. I do not know why I have to add the electron. Isn't it? So what is my valency? In a layman term, I am asking. How many elements are there? One hundred elements are there. How many compounds are there? So for answering this question, first of all, I have to move from element to compound. From element to compound. Okay. So what is the what is the difference between element and compound? Okay. Element means carbon is an element. Hydrogen is an element. Uh, sodium is an element. Now you tell me what is CO two? Compound. So these are all elements, but CO two is a compound. What is HCl? Compound. What is NaOH? Compound. What is Na two CO three? Compound. What is H two SO four? Compound. Which means one element tries to combine with another element. One element tries to combine with the another element to form compounds. So how many compounds are there? Infinite compounds can be there. Infinite compounds can be number of elements is only one eighteen, but the number of compounds can be you can have different combination and you can add them. So the number of theoretically speaking, it can be infinite, but practically it is finite only. But practically it is finite only. So what now? You tell me what is valency? Is it, uh, it is two atoms. The combining capacity of an atom to form a compound is called as valency. The combining capacity of an atom to form a compound is called as what? Valency. What is the valency of helium? What zero? Which means it is not combined with any other element to form a new compound. It is like a priest. Here, combining capacity is nothing but like your marriage. This fellow priest doesn't want to have any marriage at all because already stable. I am peaceful with mine. So he doesn't want to have any what valency or he doesn't want to have combined with the other elements. Why? Why he doesn't want to come in? Already satisfied with. Already satisfied means what? Yeah, you're right. Already it is satisfied. Already is happy with what is have. So what it does it have? Already if it's stable, it doesn't want to react. Already if it's stable, it doesn't want to react. Here it is already stable. Here it is already stable. Then the question will come to you: What is stable? Then the question will come: What is stable? I will tell first of all what is stable. Helium, then neon. Argon, krypton, xenon, radon. These are called as inert elements or inert gases. Inert elements are inert elements or inert gases. Inert means what? Highly non-reactive. Highly non-reactive. Even if I am going to shout at your ear, what is that? If I am going to react like this, it's called as inert. Even if I am going to slightly scold, if you are going to cry, then you are highly reactive. Then you are highly Reactive. In it means what? Water with the extra pressure, temperature, you the element will not react. The element will not react. It is quite stable. It is quite what? Stable. That is called as inert. That is called as what? Inert. So high helium, neon, argon, krypton, zinc, and other are called as rare elements, or we can call as inert elements. Noble. noble gases. Very good. Very good. I have missed this term. It is called as noble gases. Noble means they are. So we can't compare. They are highly noble. So they will not react. They will not react. Or they are highly inert. Okay. So which means they are highly stable. So we'll come to the history why they are highly stable after some time. After some time, we'll come to the reason why they are stable. But all elements, all elements means what? Other than these elements, all elements will try to become like these elements. Will try to become like these elements. What in every religion says? 
you have to study you have to become very good professors or a, a businessman or anything you have to excel in life finally what is telling what is i am talking now about a, a psychology okay okay what is happening after now you have earned a, what are the car you want rolls royce car you want to go wherever you want let us say you want to go to moon you want to go to mars you you succeed whatever you want in your life so finally what do you want yeah so finally you want mukti what is maybe mukti i am not going to be disturbed by this celestial things around me either it can be family either it can be wealth it can be my my uh, relationships it may be my friends it may be games i don't want anything i am going to be apart from this world i am going to reach a eternal life so that is called as what highly stable it is called as what highly stable now we are not stable because we want to learn when you want to learn you have to be highly unstable then only you can learn if you feel i i know already everything i don't want to learn means you can't study so but all other elements other than these elements will try to come closer to what like this elements like this inner gas elements because they are only stable they are only stable fine so what is meant by valency i can put in a layman term like this combining capacity of an atom combining capacity of an element or an atom is known as because element is made up of number of atoms element is made up of number of atoms okay so sometime i will be using element sometime i am using atom so don't uh, uh, think i am already using because all elements will have the basic atom so combining capacity of an atom is nothing but valency so what is the valency of carbon 4 which means it can combine with four other elements it can combine with what four elements what is the what is the valence of hydrogen one that is hydrogen can combine with only one element hydrogen can combine with only one element so when i am writing you please write the corresponding valence above the head of the each element and cross multiply with them then we will get the common c1 h4 so is generally is a practice not to indicate one so we can write this also as what CH4. We can write this as also what CH4. Now let us come to carbon. Let us come to oxygen. They are trying to uh, combine with each other. The valence of carbon is four, but we do not know how we got four. I will tell you later. So the valence of carbon is four. What is the valence of oxygen? Two. That also we will come to know after some time. So when they are going to combine with each other, you have to cross multiply. So it becomes C2O4. Let us take the simplest ratio. Each can be divided by two. So it becomes C1. O2, isn't it? So it's not required to put one, so it becomes CO2. So like this only we got carbon dioxide. Like this only we got methane. Like this only we got methane. Then let us explore some more thing. Let us take aluminium. Is a uh, is valency is three. That also we don't know. Will come later. Chlorine. What's that? Uh, what is valency? One. That also we don't know. Let us uh, let us assume that we know the valency. Then how it will be common to be formed? By cross multiplying, so it is Al one Cl three, or simply it is Al Cl three. So Al Cl three is the formula for aluminium chloride. Is the formula for what aluminium chloride? So like this only compounds have been formed. So now you may be interested how we got three for aluminium, how we got four for carbon, how we got one for chlorine, like that. Okay, so now let us try to explore. So what is my valency? The valency is nothing but Every element will try to reach the stable arrangement as like of inert gases. So they will try to combine with other elements. When they come into combine with other elements, we have the valency. We have the valency. How we got the valency? Now let us explore. Okay, let us start with the carbon. Okay, or uh, let us start with the uh, neon. Neon is atomic number is ten. Neon is atomic number is what? Ten. Here, how many protons will be there? How many electrons will be there? Ten. Electrons will be ten. How many protons will be there? Ten. We are not worried about the neutron. Let it be ten also. Okay. Based on the mass number, it will be there. So I hope it is ten also. It is ten also. Okay. Fine. So there is no doubt this neutron and proton will be inside the nucleus. So neutron is ten. Proton is also what? Ten. But coming to the electrons in the first orbit, in the first orbit, only 
two electrons will be there. In the second orbit, four electrons will be there. The second orbit, what? Sorry. Totally, how many elements are there? How many electrons are there? Ten are there. So, the outermost orbit, here eight will be there. Two, four, uh, six, eight. So, I am telling, please, uh, I will repeat once again. In case of neon, its atomic number is 10, which means there are 10 electrons, 10 protons and 10 neutrons. Based on the mass number, based on the mass number is 20, we, are, we got neutron is 10, proton is 10. Definitely we know these proton neutrons are inside the nucleus. But the electrons, they are not like that. In the first orbit, it is called as K orbit, we have only two electrons. What are the electrons? This and this. In case of second orbit, I am not talking orbital, I am talking orbit. Okay, there is a difference between orbit and orbital. Now I am talking about orbit only. So the second orbit is called as L. Now how many electrons are there? Totally 10, already 2 gone. So the remaining 8 will be here. Remaining 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. So 8 electrons in the second orbit L and 2 electrons in the first orbit 2. So totally I am getting 10 electrons. Totally I am getting what? 10 electrons. This is the way how the electrons have been arranged in an foreign uh, neon atom. So now you may put a question. Sir, why you put only two electrons in the first orbit? Why can't you put five here, five here? That may be your question. That may be your question. For that, there is a formula. For that, there is a formula called as 2n squared, where n is called as the principal, where n is called as the principal quantum number. The small, don't confuse this n with the neutron. Okay, here the n is called as what? Principal quantum number. Okay, now you put n equal to 1. If I put n equal to 1, what will become? 2 into 1 squared. 2 into 1 squared. So 2 into 1 into 1. So become 2. So when n equal to 1 means it is called as k orbit. It's called as what? For the first orbit. So it can have only 2 electrons. When n equal to 2, it will become what? 2 into n squared. So 2 into 2 squared, which means what? 2 into 4, which means what? 8 electrons. The maximum number of electrons in the second orbit, that is L orbit, can be only 8. It can be even less than 8, but it can be maximum to only what? 8. So let us come to the third orbit. The third orbit is M orbit. K, L, M, N, like that. So this M orbit, what is the value of N? N equal to what? N equal to 3, very good, N equal to 3. So it will become 2 into 3 squared. So 3 squared is 9. So 2 into 9 equal to 18. So the third orbit can have 18 electrons. So the M orbit can have how many electrons? 18 electrons. The fourth orbit is called as Catalan. K, L, M, N. N equal to what now? 4. N equal to what? 4. So 2 into 4 squared. So 2 into 16. So it can have a maximum of 32 electrons in the fourth orbit. I hope more than this is sufficient. So by means of uh, principal quantum number, we tried to come to an idea that the first orbit can have a maximum of two electrons. The, that orbit is called K orbit. The second orbit is called the L orbit, where it can have a maximum of eight electrons. And the third orbit is nothing but my M orbit, where it can have a maximum of 18 electrons. And the fourth orbit is N orbit, where it can have a maximum of uh, 32 electrons by based on the formula 2 n squared based on the where it is called the principal quantum number but we do not know what is principal quantum number right as of now we have term, a term called as what principal quantum number that we will discuss later okay so based on the principal quantum number we have seen how the electrons have been arranged so that is the beauty of the electrons and the protons so the proton will not create any problem because they are going to be inside the nucleus whereas the electrons are arrow revolving around the nucleus but not every electrons are revolving in the same orbit they are revolving in the different orbits. So every orbit can have a maximum of 40 electrons. That's what we have seen. Like this you are seeing now. So this chemistry is called as what? Physical chemistry. This chemistry is what? Physical chemistry. Because this is applicable to carbon. It is applicable to non-organic compounds. It is also it's how the electrons are arranged. How we are, it's naturally how it's been built. But so it's called as physical chemistry. So it's called as what? Physical chemistry. Okay, fine. Now, uh, like coming to the neon, the first orbit is 2. The second orbit is what? 8. So 10 is over. Okay. Okay. Similarly, let me take argon. Let me take argon. 
organ its atomic number is 18 its atomic number is what 18 okay let us not worry about the mass number okay because we are worried about only protons and electrons and not neutrons the neutrons will contribute only to the mass okay uh, if you want i can tell the mass number is 40 the mass number is what 40 okay it is z it is a mass number so how many protons are there in argon 18, 18. so proton equal to 18 how many neutrons are there in argon? Very good. So if I'm going to add these two things, I should get the mass number. So 22 plus 18 is 40. So it's 40. How many electrons will be there? 18. So we have 18 electrons. Because proton number of protons should be equal to number of electrons. So first I'll be how many electrons? Two electrons. So I put two. So two electrons. So how many remaining are there? 16. In the first orbit, how many electrons will be there? That is the second orbit. 8 electrons. You can have hold only 8 electrons. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Don't think I'm writing here. It will be uniformly spread. Because the electron cannot stay at a place. It will be keep on rotating. So don't wait. For space concern, I have written here. So it is 8 electrons. What about this K orbit? It is what? L orbit. Now coming to M orbit, how many electrons will be there? So, so 2 plus 8, 10 is over. Remaining is 8. So here also it will be what? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the outermost orbit contains how many electrons? Eight electrons. Nian also how many electrons will have? Eight electrons. So this is called as octet arrangement. What is called as what is meant by octa? Octa means eight. Octa means what? Eight. I hope it is in Greek term. Octa means eight. So whenever we have eight electrons in the outermost orbit, it is stable. It is what? Stable. <coughs> what about neon? This is what argon. What about neon? Neon is atomic number 10. So the first orbit is 2. The second orbit is what? 8. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is neon. So 2 electrons. Here also we can find the outermost orbit have 8 electrons. That is the M orbit. Here also the outermost orbit has uh, how many electrons? 8 electrons. So if the element contains 8 electrons in its outermost orbit, then it is quite stable. How do you know? Because we have taken this... Uh, Argon, Neon, Helium, Krypton, Xenon and we substitute it to high temperature and pressure and all then also it is not reacting which means they are stable which means that they are so it is not by anything it is by, by, by means of doing experiments by means of doing conducting some experiments we found they are highly unreactive or non-reactive why they are non-reactive so they analyze why this fellow Argon is not reacting why this fellow Neon is not reacting they found a common thing between all these elements and came to the idea that in the outermost orbit, they are having how many electrons? Eight electrons. There is octet arrangement. So, every element will try to reach that of the inert gases. The exception is helium. But what is the atomic number of helium? Two. So, how many protons will be there? Two. So, how many neutrons will also be there? Two. Because based on the mass number of writing. How many electrons will be there? Two. Even though it is two, it is also quite stable because it has completed the maximum of electrons. So the only exception to the inert gas arrangement of octa is helium because that also satisfies the complete uh, number of electrons. So helium is also quite stable. Helium is also quite stable. So helium, I will repeat once again. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, all these have 8 electrons in the outermost orbit except helium. Except uh, helium, it will have only 2 electrons, I agree. Since they have outermost orbit only 8 electrons, they are quite stable. They are quite stable. Whereas all other elements also will try to reach 8 electrons in the outermost orbit to become stable. To become what? Stable. Now let us take a, the last example, we will take it <coughs> before our lunch. So we can see carbon. I will erase this one. Carbon, its atomic number is what? 6. So how many protons are there? 6. Its uh, mass number is 12. So how many neutrons are there? 6. Because 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. How many electrons are there? 6. So the first orbit, how many electrons will be there? 2. Out of 6, 2 is occupied here. In the second orbit, how many electrons can be back and can be there? 8. But how many is there actually? 4 only, 4, very good, 4 only left. Even though this orbit, uh, K, L orbit can have maximum weight, 
but this carbon has only four. Whether it's reached an octet? No. When it can reach octet? If it can get four number of electrons, it becomes what? Stable. So the valence of carbon is four. So the valence of carbon is what? If I can accommodate four more electrons, it can become what? Stable. So you can see now this is only four. That's what you also told earlier. Either by removing or adding. Now this carbon can even give all these four electrons. It will become like helium. Then also stable. This carbon can also get four more electrons. It will become like neon. Then also stable. Okay. So there's a possibility. That's what you told me when I was asking earlier. What is my valency? You told either by adding or removing the electrons to attend the stable to attend the a stable convection. That's what you told earlier. So I also came to that. Well, what you told is right. So these are four electrons. So this is the valency of carbon. So the valency of carbon is four. It's achieved like this. Still it has to be explained still further deeper. But I will tell it a uh, little later. Right as of now this is okay. Right as of now this is okay. But it's not completely okay. But still the valency of carbon is what? Four. Okay fine. So I'm, I just want to teach like uh, small students. Slowly we will get the concepts. Now let us take uh, sodium. What is sodium atomic number? 11. Its mass number is 23. Its mass number is what? 23. So how many protons are there? Proton is 11. How many neutrons are there? 12. Because we are going to add this to, I will get the mass number. Very good. So how many electrons are there? 11. Electrons is 11. So the first orbit, how many electrons can be there? Maximum of 2. Okay, second orbit, I have 9 electrons, but I can accommodate only 8 electrons. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 2 plus 8 is what? 10. How many electrons are left out? One. Only 1. You can have up to 18 electrons, but I have only 1 electron. So it is what? 2, 8, 1. So if I am going to add, it becomes 11. Now, if this, if the sodium want to attain octet, what it has to do? Yeah, either it has to get 7 electrons or it can lose 1 electron. If I'm going to lose this electron, then this becomes 8 electrons. Otherwise, I have to get eight, 7 more electrons to become 8. So, which is easier? Removing, giving away 1 electron is easier for sodium. So, it can become like neon. It can become what? Neon. So, what are the valence of sodium now? 1. What are the valence of sodium now? 1. So, the valence of sodium is 1. Why? If I'm going to remove one electron, I can become what? Stable configuration. What the logic how I'm getting? Okay, fine. Now let us take another example. Aluminium, I, I told the aluminium valence is 3 and I put chlorine valence as 1. Then I cross multiply and I told you here aluminium chloride, isn't it? Now let us try to explain what is the, how we got the valency of aluminium as 3. What are the atomic number of aluminium? 13. I hope it's a mass number is 26. I am not uh, that much sure. Let us assume it's 26. How many protons is there? 13. How many neutrons? 13. Okay. So electrons. First orbit? 2 electrons. Second orbit? 8 electrons. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 2, 8. How many remaining? 3. Okay, 3 electrons. So now if you want to obtain octet, what are the possibilities for this uh, common aluminium? Giving away three electrons or getting, getting five electrons. Or we can tell the number of electrons in the outermost orbit. Number of electrons in the outermost. How many electrons are there now? It is easy to remove the three electrons. So the valence of aluminium is three. So the valence of aluminium is what? I've got the logic what I'm saying. Now let us uh, take the last example and we'll uh, uh, finish for the day. Because we may be tired. So chlorine is atomic number is 17. And his mass number is 35.5. His mass number is what? 35.5. So what is the number of protons? 17. 17. What are the neutrons? 18. Yeah, it is actually his mass number is the mass actually. So we can have 18 or 18.5. Uh, so let us have 18. Uh, okay, mass will be 18.5 gram. But uh, the number of neutrons will be 18. Okay, what about the electrons? First of it is 2. So the number of electrons will also be what? 17. Okay. So 2, the second orbit is what? Eight. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it is 8. So 10 is over. What is the remaining? Uh, seven. 7. So the remaining 7 is here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. 3, 6, 7. 
seven electrons are there in the outermost orbit. Now in order to attain this chlorine has to attain stable conviction, what are the possibilities? Getting one electron or giving away seven electrons, which is easier? Getting one electron. Oh, here you should not tell the number of electrons is the outermost orbit, then your answer becomes seven. It's not like that. It's not like that. Okay, if it goes more than four, you try to subtract from eight. If it goes more than four, you try to subtract from eight. So we can see this. Otherwise, our definition is right. If this coin want to become stable, either it can lose seven electrons or gain one electron, which is easier. Gaining one electron is easier. So the valence of chlorine is one. So the valence of chlorine is what? One. So we can see aluminum has a valence of three, chlorine has a valence of one. So when they are going to combine with each other, we will attain Al1, Cl3. So this is the reason why aluminum chloride is formed. This is the reason why aluminum chloride is now, once the aluminum chloride is formed, both aluminum and chlorine will attain octal aluminum. Will attain what? Octal aluminum that we will see in future classes. That we will see in future classes. So, today I will uh, consolidate whatever we discussed. Slowly, we started with uh, the type of chemistry physical, organic, and inorganic. Physical chemistry is whatever we have seen so far is physical chemistry. How the atoms are arranged, how the electrons are arranged, how the protons are arranged, where they are arranged, and how, how, how they want to react. All these things are explained by physical chemistry. Organic chemistry is the beauty of carbon chemistry because the carbon has the only tendency to combine with itself with, for, to form a very long chain. Okay, it can be even infinite theoretically, but practically it's limited by the number of carbon atoms. Whereas other elements do not have the tendency to combine with itself, and hence it's called as all the living organisms also have carbon, and hence the organic chemistry is uh, carbon is present in all uh, organisms, and hence it's called as organic chemistry, or also it is called as what? Uh, carbon is called as what? Uh, uh, yeah, carbon chemistry. Other than carbon, if you are going to discuss other compounds like uh, uh, iron, silver, copper, all these things, it is called as inorganic chemistry. It is called as what? Inorganic. After that, slowly we came to know what is meant by atomic number, how an element is made up of number of atoms, how the atom, what are the elements, the subatomic particles we have, neutrons, protons, and electrons, how they are arranged, what is meant by atomic number, what is meant by mass number, whether an atom is neutral or not, uh, how the electrons will be arranged, what contributes to the mass. What contributes to the number, charge, etc. we have seen. And slowly we came, why, what is maybe valency? Why an element have to react with another element to form a compound? Because they want to attain octets similar to inert gases. Why they are stable? That also we found they have 8 electrons in the outermost orbital. Apart from helium, which has 2 electrons. So we got, uh, then also we came to understand how the electrons have been arranged in different orbits based on the principal quantum number. Then we found the maximum number of electrons in the first orbit is 2. Second is 8, third is 18, etc. So every element will try to attend this after element. Based on that only the valence is derived. Based on that only valence is derived. We found the valency of carbon is 4, the valency of hydrogen is 1, the valency of aluminum is 3, the valency of chlorine is 1, like that. Okay, so I hope you will get some, uh, uh, some ideas now. In the next session, we will go deeper and we will try to go with some chemical reaction. We will form some equations, we will try to balance it and we see chemistry is nothing. It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. Thank you.